Hello everyone, I am Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem of the day, that is number of nth leaves. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? You are given n cross m binary matrix grid where 0 represents a C cell and 1 represents a land cell. So basically, we are given a 2D matrix of size n cross m, n is the number of rows, m is the number of columns and it is a binary matrix. So each cell will have value either 0 or 1. What does 0 represent? It represents a C cell. It means there is water in it and 1 represents a land cell. Okay. A move consists of walking from one land cell to another adjacent four directionally land cell or walking off the boundary of the grid. Okay. So what does a move consist of? A move in a one move you can either move from one land cell to another land cell if both of them are land cells. So both of them should have value 1 and uh, that is adjacent okay to one another so from one cell you can either go to the cell which is on the right hand side of it or to the cell which is on the left hand side of it or to the cell which is above it or to the cell which is below it okay so the adjacent cells in all the four directions okay and both of them should be land cell or walking off the boundary of the grid so you just move outside the boundary of the grid okay so suppose you are at 0 0 and the value is a land cell so you can just move outside the boundary of the grid find the number of land cells in grid for which we cannot walk off the boundary of the grid in any number of moves so basically we need to tell all the land cells num the number of land cells means the number of cells which contains one in the grid for which we cannot move out of the like for which we cannot move off the boundary in any number of moves so starting from that cell we cannot move out of the boundary okay so in any number of steps so in one step you can move from that land cell to another land cell then from to another land cell but uh, e even after any number of moves you cannot move outside the boundary okay we'll see the example you'll have a very clear idea so if we look at here so understand one thing here there are four land cells one two three and four now from this land cell i can move out of the boundary i'll just come left yes from this land cell can i go out of the boundary no from this land cell i can go to here yes from here i can go to here yes but from here i cannot come out right so from here i cannot go outside the land outside of the boundary from here also i cannot take a move off the boundary from here also i cannot take a move off the boundary so the number of land cells from where we cannot go off the boundary is three these are the three from here i can go so the answer is three okay here the same explanation is given if we look at here uh, if we look at this this is a land cell i can go off from the boundary from here from here also i can go from these two land cells also i can go but from these four land cells i cannot go off the boundary after any number of moves okay if there was a one year then i would be able to go out from here also from here i would go here from here i would go here and from here i would go off the boundary so starting with this cell also i was able to go off the boundary after three number of moves okay so one two if there was one year and three but uh, at present i cannot go so there are four number of land cells from where i cannot go off the boundary so the answer is four and the explanation is given here okay complete the function number of enclaves which takes 2d integer matrix grade as the input parameter and returns an integer denoting the number of land cells from where you cannot go off the boundary the expected time complexity is n cross m and expected space complexity is n cross m okay and the constraints are given here so now if we think about solving this problem then basically here one move is defined as in two ways either you move from one land cell to another adjacent land cell so two land cells are adjacent to each other horizontally or vertically or you move from land cell to out of the boundary okay in that way a move is defined and we need to tell the number of land cells means the number of cells which contains value 1 from where we cannot go out of the boundary after any number of moves. So here can I make a statement that if from a land cell if I can go off the boundary then I can go off the boundary from all the cells which are adjacent to that cell okay. For example can I go off the boundary from this cell yes. So I will be able to go off the boundary for all the cells which are uh, from uh, from where I can reach here okay which are uh, reachable till this cell directly or indirectly so I can go off the boundary from here also I can go directly also but since this is adjacent to this I can first go here and then go off the boundary I can go off the boundary from here also now look at this I cannot go off the boundary directly from here but since I am able to reach a cell which from where I can go off the boundary I can able to reach the cell from starting from here so I will be able to go off the boundary from this cell as well 
what will i do from here i'll go to here and from here i can go off the boundary or i can go to here and then go off the boundary or i can go to here and then go off the boundary so from here also i am able to go off the boundary okay if we look at this cell we can go off the boundary here also and from here also now another statement if i cannot go off the boundary from a particular length cell i cannot go off the boundary from the land cells which are adjacent to that cell or which are reachable from that cell okay so what does that mean can i go off the boundary from this land cell no so i can i also cannot go off the boundary from the land cell which are reachable till here so uh, i can reach here from here so i will not be able to go off the boundary from this land cell also also these two are adjacent i can go from here to here and from here to here and these two are from here we cannot go off the boundary so i cannot go off the boundary from here as well okay so the two statements are if from a particular land cell if you can go off the boundary then you can go off the boundary from all the cells which are adjacent or reachable from that cell and if you cannot go off the boundary from a particular land cell then for all the land cells which are reachable from that land cell for them also you cannot go off the boundary now we need to solve this question so how can we solve it what we can do is first of all in answer variable we can mark the total number of land cells so how many are total number of land cells 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so there are total 9 number of land cells right now can i say all the ones which are reachable from one another forms one connected component right so what i can do i can traverse the whole uh, like a 2d matrix i can first of all convert it into a graph how for graph we need two things nodes and ages so each cell will represent a node and we will assume an age between two cells which are either horizontally or vertically adjacent to each other because we can move horizontally or vertically so we, we can consider a graph we will only consider the cells which have value 1 because the cells which have value 0 are water cells or c cells okay we cannot move into them so initially i have taken answer equals to 9 now i'll traverse through this 2d matrix row after row and whenever a cell is not visited and it is a land cell okay so whenever a cell is not visited so visited of ij is false and it is a land cell so a of ij is equals to 1 and it is a boundary cell it means from there i can go off the boundary so and i is 0 or j is 0 or i is equals to n minus 1 or j equals to m minus 1 what i'll do i'll connect the number of land cells which are connected with this cell and subtract it from my answer now how can i find the number of connected cells i can call a dfs from it because i have considered that cell as a node and i'll count the number of nodes which are connected to it and we will assume age between two cells if they are horizontally or vertically or adjacent to each other and the value in that cell is one so i'll know how many number of cells i will reach right by applying a dfs so if a cell is not visited before if so basically the cell uh, this co the connected component having this cell is not visited before and the value is one it is a land cell and if it is a boundary cell so i can go off the boundary from that cell then i will also be able to go off the boundary from the cells which are reachable to that cell or which are connected to that cell so i'll call a dfs and then i'll count the number of cells and subtract from it because i want the number of cells from where i cannot go off the boundary this will give me the number of cells from where i can go off the boundary okay so i have taken the total number of land cells initially now this is not visited so i'll visit it is this a boundary cell yes so i'll start dfs and count the number of ones connected there is only one one so i'll subtract one from it then i'll go further this is also not visited i'll call a dfs on it so this will be visited this will be visited this will be visited and this will be visited and all of them from there i can go off the boundary so now i'll subtract four i'll keep a count of the number of cells visited now i'll start from this row this is also one but it is not a boundary cell so i'll not call the function okay then uh, uh, this is one but this is also not the boundary cell now uh, this is visited before so i'll not call again so this should not be visited right but since this was connected to this this is already visited before so i'll not call any function from it 
then if we look at here this is the boundary cell which is also a land cell but it is also visited before so we will not do anything now we will come here this is also a boundary cell and it is not visited before the number of uh, ones which are connected to this is only one okay because two ones are adjacent to it either they are horizontal or vertically adjacent to it okay we are not considering the diagonal cases so now this will return me one so i'll subtract one so it would be nine minus six it would give me three so there are three number of cells we, from where you cannot go off the boundary and the three cells are this this and this okay so basically what we will do if i conclude i will start moving row by row to each of the vertex if a vertex is not visited before or a cell is not visited before if that is a land cell and if it is a boundary cell so i can go off the boundary from that cell i'll call a dfs from that cell and visit all the nodes which are connected to it so from there also i will be able to go off the boundary okay and uh, i'll mark them as visited and i'll keep a counter of the number of cells which are connected to it okay and i'll subtract that count from the total number of ones initially i'll count the total number of ones and store it in the answer and this will give me the number of cells uh, which are land cells and from where we cannot go off the boundary i hope this is clear now let's look at its actual implementation so now if we look at the actual implementation so this is the function we are given a 2d grid so first of all i have taken an answer variable and marked it as zero i have taken n as the grid size that is the number of rows m as grid zero that is zero row size number of element in zero row that is the number of columns and some variables okay i have taken one visited array of size n cross 501 because whenever we visit a node in a graph while well, dfs we mark it as visited okay i have initialized them as false uh, first of all i have initialized all of the cells as false and during this traversal i have also counted the number of land cells so if the grid of ij is one make answer plus plus because in initially in answer i am storing total number of land cells then for uh, all the cells what i'll do if that cell is not visited before if that is a land cell and if it is a boundary cell so i equals to 0 or j equals to 0 or i is n minus 1 or j is m minus 1 in that case uh, make the counter variable 0 call the dfs pass in the cell value that is i through and j column pass the total number of rows and columns pass the visited array pass the grid value and pass the counter okay so this counter will basically give me the total number of nodes which are land cells and which are connected to this cell this is a boundary cell so the cells which are connected to the boundary cell from there also i can go off the boundary so it will give me this and finally i'll do answer equals to answer minus c because i want the number of cells from where i cannot go off the boundary and these are the count of cells from where i can go off the boundary so first i have stored the total number of land cells and then i have subtracted it and then finally i'll return the answer now let's look at this dfs function so now if you look at the dfs function so first of all i'll mark this cell as true that this is visited and i'll increment the counter variable also i have passed the counter variable as a reference because it was declared in the original function okay and i want that value only to be changed so i'll not pass it by value i'll pass it by reference okay then if we look here now understand one thing uh, if i am at a cell ij then what are the adjacent cells where i can go it is i comma j plus 1 the column will increase by 1 it is i comma j minus 1 it is i minus 1 comma j and it is i plus 1 comma j okay so from i j i can go to this cell so that is what i am basically doing but first i need to check whether it is within the boundaries that is the row number is between 0 and n minus 1 and column number is between 0 and m minus 1. So if i minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, it is within the boundaries. First of all, I will check whether that cell is visited or not and whether it is a land cell. So if it is not visited before and if it is a land cell, I will call a DFS uh, at i minus 1 row and jth column cell and the remaining things will uh, stay as it is. Similarly, for i plus 1, it is basically calling this. Uh, this is call, uh, trying to reach this node. Uh, if i plus 1 is less than and this condition is checking for this node so if it is not visited before and if it is a land cell call the dfs there if j minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 it is checking for the left adjacent cell again if it is not visited before and if it is a land cell call the dfs and j plus 1 is checking for the right adjacent cell so if it is not visited before and if it is a land cell call the dfs okay so uh, we will get uh, through dfs we will get the count of nodes which are connected to a cell which is on the boundary 
because we called DFS for only those land cells which were on the boundary and we subtracted it from the answer, right? What would be the time complexity? See, for DFS, the time complexity is V plus E, that is the number of nodes, and, uh, number of vertices and number of edges. Now, what are the number of vertices N cross M and what are the number of edges? See, one particular node is connected to four adjacent cells. So, there are four edges I can assume uh, with respect to one node if I do not consider the boundary cases. Also, one node is common between, oh, sorry, one edge is common between two nodes. So, what I can say is there are total 4 n cross m divided by 2 because one edge is common between two or both of them. So, approximately 2 n square m edges, okay, which is nothing but 2 n square m and 1 plus 2 is 3, but 3 is constant. So, I can remove it in big O notation. So, the total time complexity would be big O of n cross m. What would be the auxiliary space? The auxiliary space will also be equal to big O of n cross m. Why? Because uh, we are taking this visited array, right, which is of size n cross m, right. So, that is basically uh, will occupy n cross m size. Now, let us submit this code. So, let us submit it. So, we have solved this problem successfully. I hope you have understood the solution completely. Thank you.